have an Audio Center EA5 series. This happens to be a 512, a 12 inch active powered speaker. Right, so let me just uh, unbox it for you. Okay, so you see it's a box in a box and just in case uh, you are importing this and you don't want to get fake uh, items, I always just show the packaging. It's got the sticker there, there's the audio center name, uh, some information there. So this is what the packaging looks like and I'll just unbox it quickly. What you will notice is the packaging tape actually says audio center on it. You can see it actually says audio center. Alright, so I'm opening it up. Uh, just the desiccates for drying. The uh, clamps if you want to hang the speakers, cables. Here's the country specific power cable. There's the user manual and warranty card. And to get the speaker out, you want to grip left and right. There's the uh, handles here. Okay, so here is the EA512, comes in white or black. The weight is 26 kilograms. The height, as you can see, 61 centimeters off the ground, keeping in mind at the bottom there are little feet. The total width is just over 37 centimeters and the depth uh, is 38 centimeters. Now, just having a look at the finish, and that's why I've got a Marshall speaker standing right next to this one. Uh, you can see this is almost like an enamel. Uh, it's probably got a coating here pretty resilient but try and scratch it off it's pretty resilient look obviously you can scratch it off but overall i think it will be quite hardy and there's a closer look at the finish this is uh if you if you know about spray painting cars this is almost like if you sprayed with a dirty nozzle it gives that effect it's almost like it's spattered and those familiar with the marshall brand will know this is like an, an actual wrap so the audio center is completely different to the Marshall type speaker. The Marshall's the wrapped one. The audio center is really just the sprayed one. Okay, I'm going to show you the different angles. Now, this is the side. It's got the grab handle here. Strong construction. Even if I try and bend it a little bit, it's got no give whatsoever. Good for a big hand. You can see there, I've got a big hand. It's got screw, 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 screw. So it looks like it's a premium construction. And there you can see the close up. Quite interesting is the signature type uh, grill. You can see there it follows a wave pattern. There are a lot of screws on the side there. And now let's flip to the front. Right, so there uh, is a steel grill and behind it is a mesh and probably a nylon mesh. So you can't see in very easily. The woofer is here. There's the audio center badge. There's a little LED. It shines blue. It's like a high bright, so it's pretty powerful. And then here is the horn. Here's just the uh, marketing. So I'm going to take that off now. And there, I don't know if you can see a closer view, the mesh that is kind of blanking out the view of the speaker. Okay, in terms of quality of construction, uh, you can see there it is uh, almost flat to the hand. Here there's an overlap and here it's almost the other way around. The grill is overlapping the top here of the wood. Because as you can see, this grill has not been seated properly. If you have a look at that distance there, that is about two millimeters. While if you have a look there, that is actually wider. That is probably three millimeter and it's that one millimeter that changes this because if this went in a little bit it would be consistent with the shape of the other side i'm just highlighting these things because i look at the construction of the products in my reviews right is this strong definitely um i'm not worried about it this part here will deform if it's kicked there is a support here so here if i press it you can see uh, it's supported there's a piece of wood coming around here I think it's wood, I'm not 100% sure, but there is a support there, but here, as you can see, it will deform. So if I had to hit it here quite hard, uh, it would bend. And But it will be quite easy to pull it out because you can grab any of these uh, little holes and you could probably pull it out. Right, now this is a beveled side and you can see there are four feet and a very premium, two screws, low pitch and uh, that's if you want to put the speaker kind of facing up like that and i'll demonstrate it for you right now because it's rubberized it sticks so it's not easy to uh, just move it around which is great for a speaker right while i've got the underside here you can see there's where you can put it on a stand and it's got a little button here and what that button does is you can see you can angle the speaker so this is a really nice feature so there you go 
and seated back and now I can actually wedge it forward see there so you can actually angle the speaker again premium construction looks solid and while we're at the bottom, you can see there's the four rubberized feet. Right, if you are specifying a wall mount bracket for the speaker, you can see that this says 21 centimeters from the, where the wall mount side is to where the center of the pin is. Uh, keeping in mind there is a weight uh, specification for wall mount brackets, but just to show you that this would be your minimum size. Okay, on the opposite side, you can see there's the other grab handle. So here we go, you've got two handles. On the side you can attach a bracket for hanging and you can also do it on the top. There you can attach a bracket for hanging. Right, at the back this is where you've got the uh, control center there, you've got an air vent, air vent, power on or off, your country specific, well this happens to be a kettle plug but then go into your country specific power cable. You can see here that it says 220 volts, so obviously different countries are going to have different power supply. This happens to be a 220 to 240 volt, 50 or 60 hertz supply. Right, I just have a basic setup here just to do some preliminary tests. Remember, this is just a first review. So I've got uh, some music here connected uh, digitally by a audio interface. It happens to be an M Audio M Track M2x2. And I've got also a microphone, and the M Audio is connected directly to the E. A512 the audio center as well as I have this microphone and the reason why I'm doing this is I want to show you the mixing function of this EA512 right now let's quickly just review the connections for the EA512 the first thing you'll notice is you've got two inputs here it says mic line A and then it says line B right so if you want to put your mic you will then connect it here to channel A and the reason is you can select line or mic and why you do this is the mic uh, it actually amplifies the volume quite a bit so I'll just give you an example turn this down if it's on line right so you can hear if it's on line you barely can hear the speaker but when I put it on mic then you can see you're getting the correct volume so everything to do with channel A, whether it's on mic or line, is controlled by this volume knob. Right, now then it says out A. So if you want the signal to go to another speaker, then you can just daisy chain it from the output over here. All right, now if you want to put a line in, maybe you don't want to use it as a PA system, you just want to use it for uh, music only, then you can just plug in your line directly to channel A. Just make sure you've told it it's line and there you will adjust the volume and what you'll notice can you see it says there's signal A it tells you there's a signal and if I shift this to signal B if I shift this to signal B you can see there uh, it's uh, the hybrid LED is showing you the signal is active right now next to it is a limiter that is if you overdrive the amplifier so that would go into limit and I will show you that shortly and then you've got protect that is if there's a fault then uh, this will go on and then it says front led if you don't like that little led on the front which is uh, blue and i believe it goes red on standby then you can switch it off you'll find like this is not that easy to press it's almost like this back plate is a little bit too out you can see i'm pressing it but i kind of have to get my finger right in there so that's just a little design flaw there they haven't uh, uh, either assemble this properly or this button is too far in and then here it's got aux okay then lastly maybe you want to mix the signal now I'll tell you what I mean by that so let me just uh, turn the volumes down it's always good practice to put the volumes very low when you insert the uh, XLRs so I'm just gonna put that there and I'm gonna put it on mic and I'm gonna set this volume to something where you can hear it there you go and I'm going to have the music. So now what it's doing is it's actually mixing both signals. It's mixing what's coming in in line B and coming in in line A. And then it says they mix out. Can you see this uh, terminal here? This XLR out will be the mixed signal of your mic plus your line. And that will go through to another speaker or whatever you need. All right. Now, I don't know if you can hear. There's actually a fan blowing here.
Okay, so it's not very loud, but it is noticeable. If you are sitting over here, you can hear the fan. Obviously, the speaker would be faced the other way. So overall, I'm happy with these connections. Now I'll just do an SPL test. Okay, so firstly, you can see the box is ported with the t-shirt test there. And then uh, the, that is the maximum SPL I got. Just like call it 110 decibels. And this is the limiter that was shown while taking the test. And just briefly having a look at the specifications, you can see under the EA512, it says the maximum SPL is 128 continuous. And then it says peak 134. But then it says calculated. Uh, I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but uh, calculated SPL, mm, not so sure about that. So for me, I just work with what I measure and uh, 110 is no problem. And keeping in mind, it was measured in a room that is not very big. But don't get hung up on specs like that, the how, the SPL and things like that, because 110 decibels is loud at a continuous volume. Now, keeping in mind that if we change the type of music that was playing there and we just really let it distort and we had the vocal, maybe some very high piezoelectric vocals coming through there, then the SPL would go up. So I, I'm always a bit wary about specifications. And then here you can also see it says 2000 watts. Again, um, I I don't really believe it and it's not really important. What's important is how it sounds when you listen to it. I would say that, that this speaker sounds about 350 watts RMS when I listen to it. All right, just having a look inside. Okay, so here are the internals. Here you can see the power supply coming in there. Uh, there's the earth, the positive is there, the love, the neutral, there's got some uh, toroids, there's a regulator, and here are the smoothing capacitors. These capacitors are actually branded audio center, they're wrapped um, with a quality check there, I'm, I'm sure this is just for the whole unit. And then it uh, comes through here, there's probably a switching transformer, because this is a class D, which means that it uh, relies on the MOSFETs, at a very high frequency. Normally class A or class B, the transistors work in the active region, which actually dissipates a lot of heat and uses a lot of power. Class A has the best sound, uh, and that would be in your high end, more your top end listening, not really for clubs and things like that. But now when you go to class D, what you do is you, you're using the transistor in a very short space of time. So it actually works as a switch rather than as an amplifier. And it switches. So it becomes more efficient because now they're saying it gives you 2000 watts. Not sure how they work that out. But nevertheless, uh, you can see the size of this amplifier. It's really small. And that's the telltale sign of a class D, especially when you see this high frequency transformer in the group here as well. All right. So here you've got some toroids um, and there are the there's the sub and the tweeter or the horn, uh, the output going into the box. And that's probably for the little LED on the front. <clears throat> The three wires here, probably because it says it's blue and red, so that is a three-way LED. All right, so what I'm not seeing are the FETs themselves. They probably at the back. You see, I see some pins there. If you look closely, you can see three pins there, three pins there, and then there's probably some more somewhere around you. There's three, there's three. So what you're probably finding is the FETs are are actually at the back of the circuit board and that is bolted onto the heat sink at the back and see there's a heat sink and in the speaker you might find I don't, i'm just guessing you might find that the fins of this heat sink are actually in the speaker and the speaker you know as the amplifier has to work harder obviously the woofer would be moving more and if it's moving more there's airflow and because this is a ported box as i've already shown you therefore it's probably cooling on the inside if that heat sink is actually going inside there i'm not going to open it any further i'm just going to uh, that's just a guess and here's a little analog side there's your inputs and uh, there's a little fan here and a nice uh, face plate here with some sponging there and time to close it uh, just if you are interested in the construction you can have a look right now all right so i can count six layers here one two three four five six just giving you an idea of the construction here all right so we're going to do some female vocal tests i always find the female vocal 
tends to test the uh, mid-range of the speaker very well. Now here you can see we've just got a Shure SM58 plugged right into the back of the EA512. It's on the mic line input there. I've set it to mic. Uh, I've now put it on the main and then that means it's still got some bass response. You can adjust that to the monitor which will reduce some of the bass but I'm going to put it on the main because we want to get some of the low end of the female vocals to come through. I'm setting the volume at minus 12 decibels. I'm not trying to measure how loud it goes. I'm really trying to see the dynamic range of the speaker with the female vocals. Here we go. Such a feeling's coming over me. There is wonder in most everything I see. Not a cloud in the sky. Got the sun in my eyes. And I won't be surprised if it's a dream. So now we've set the speaker to the monitor mode, so it's going to reduce some of the low frequencies. We've only just begun to live white lace and promises, a kiss for luck and we're on our way, we've only begun. Okay, in closing, what I think of the speaker overall, I'm quite happy with it. As I did say, there are some minor issues in terms of the construction and more aesthetic. You know, it's, there's a little bit of a lip here and also on the face plate at the back. But overall, do I think this is well constructed? Yes, I do. I mean, if you, if you do this, it feels strong. It doesn't rattle. It feels like it's going to stay solid for a long time. I like these uh, rubberized feet. I like the handles. It's solid. I like this uh, wave grill. Okay, so for the most important thing is how does it sound? Well, it sounds great. If you listen to house music, very good. You can plug in your uh, audio device directly into the speaker. But if you're going to listen to alternative music, rock, metal, and things like that, well, you will need a graphic equalizer because you'll need to turn the mid down. Uh, they, the back of the speaker, as you saw, there's no mid, uh, treble, or bass knobs. So you'll have to do your own graphic equalization before you uh, put your signal into the speaker. The sound is, sounds good. The female vocals are definitely way above average. I could honestly say this speaker is a good speaker. I have not tried it for more than 20 minutes. I will now use it in a function and I will do a second review after it's been playing for a while, you know, and also the bass will probably get a bit better once the speaker, the woofer wears in a little bit. Just talking about the bass, this is a 12 inch speaker. I can say that this 12 inch sounds close to some 15 inch woofers. It has a lot of power for its size. Keeping in mind my preliminary tests are done indoors. I am going to do it outdoors in my next review because you know outdoors is a completely different uh, sound stage to where it is indoors. 